and let's talk about some of the bets that you personally are making and that you're making on behalf of the, the great organization that you represent. We have a very unique medium here. The success of media happens when people use it for its uniqueness and its power. All right, I'm here with Barry Fry, the CEO of DPAA Global, a trade body that represents all of digital at home, whether you're a media owner, a media buyer, or tech companies like us that are the glue that pull everyone together. Um, it's really a pleasure to have you. You literally are the chief innovation officer of the entire industry. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here at Adomni HQ. Well, it is a privilege to have you here on billboards, bets, and a little bit of booze. I love the alliteration, Jonathan. I'm a big fan <laughs> and a big fan of yours as well. Well, thanks. It's you, great thank to be you. here in your hometown, uh, the, uh, the global capital of Adomni in Las Vegas, Nevada. So we're, we're going to talk about a few things that really excite me, and that's the future of digital at home. And, you know, that excites me too. Hopefully. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've seen a little bit of that excitement here and yeah, there. Right. Um, but, but really, you know, let's have some fun. Let's, you know, before jumping into business, what we like to do just to honor the tradition and the history of this great city mm -hmm. is to start off by having a little fun. So on the screen here, we have a roulette wheel. Okay. I don't know if you uh, tend to, to kind of go towards certain numbers or colors, but uh, if you want to throw out a few to kick, right. kick off the, the bets. Let's do uh, 32 red. Uh, what does that mean? Oh, that's the bet. Okay. Eight, uh, eight black. And how about uh, 18 red? And just for shits and giggles, let's, I'm going to throw in a green zero. Okay. So someone's guaranteed to win. And here we go. Spin it up, Adam. Spin the wheel. Spin and spin and spin. Boy, that right. music is mysterious. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. So black, baby. All right. So for this... Uh, opening sequence of our fun little podcast here. Whatever color it lands on corresponds with a box. Ah, Joe is okay. brought over. So we win something no matter what. And yeah, you you are guaranteed wow. something. So why don't you open that up and do the honors? Okay. Dun, 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 here's the box. And what do we got here? Whoa. Hmm. Let's see what this is here. Looks like a scotch. Okay. Are you a scotch drinker? I, you know, I tend not to be a scotch drinker. This is a Glen Moore 1980 mm. single malt scotch whiskey from the Highlands. But for today, I really wanted to raise a glass and uh, propose a toast to our industry, to innovation, to the DPAA, the great work you're doing. And, uh, and let's talk about some of the bets that you personally are making and that you're making on behalf of the, the great organization that you represent. Excellent, Jonathan. Cheers. Thanks for having me here. Cheers and uh, to some great scotch and a, and a good friend and, and a great industry. Cheers. Mm, smooth. Good. After this, let's go to Scotland. So as you think about today and into the future and the bets that you, you personally are getting behind or that you already have on the table, what are some of the things that come to mind? You know, one of the bets that we're putting down now is, um, is global. And uh, because we're operating largely in the, the digital framework of the out-of-home world, um, global um, and digital cross borders nicely. You know, it's tougher for analog to um, have best practices, data, strategy, programmatic cross borders. But when you're working in the digital world in an electronic medium, in a, in a digital framework, uh, borders can really be crossed easily. And uh, the growth opportunity for members learning from other members, from people connecting to other people in this digital global fashion, um, I think is pretty powerful. We, we've done this already. We have actually now, I would say about Almost 40% of our members are headquartered outside the U.S. Hmm. at this point. Uh, and certainly the, you know, the U.S. Is, is the big growth engine. 
But uh, I came back from London a few weeks ago, and uh, we've got a, a fellow there that's, um, you know, kicking up some good dirt for us. And uh, it's, um, I, I think that's one of the bets, and it, it makes a lot of sense because we are operating in this digital forward world. You know, as we, we talked about the summit this year, we, you know, the, the, we got through the pain of, uh, of COVID, which was tough for everybody. And mm-hmm. uh, as you know, my summit a couple of years ago was all about resilience, reimagination, and reinvention. And mm-hmm. once we got past there, um, now it's all about digital fast forward, which is probably the second bet. You know, it's, it's all about digital. And when we talk about digital for out of home, you know, we're not just talking about screens. We're talking about, look, something you do great, uh, which people wouldn't imagine right away, is uh, user-generated content. That's a digital mechanism of working in out-of-home media. We talk about AR, VR. We talk about 3D. Uh, we talk about uh, digital data, digital targeting. Uh, of course, we talk about screens as well. But it's a digital mindset that I think is really going to be the uh, the growth area and the growth engine of out-of-home across you know, every discipline, it's a digital world, it's a digital media world. And uh, so those are two bets. Um, uh, you've caught me off guard. I have, there's probably a third bet there someplace, but maybe by the end of this, we'll figure out what that is. Yeah. And maybe we'll touch upon each of those and I'll give you a little perspective, at least from, from how we look at the global side and as a programmatic platform and one that is really looking to simplify the access to audiences. What programmatic has done and what your organization, the DPAA, has done is bring together media owners, technology providers, so that everyone is in it together. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think that when you look at the major, you know, comp- competing platforms, priority, you know, other other uh, you know ways that media media buyers can spend their money, scale is one of the first things that attracted the biggest brands, the PNGs, right. um, to to those platforms. And so, in a way, we 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 needed to band together, and here we are drinking scotch, and you have a beard, and I don't know if uh, if William Wallace with his with those blue eyes or, or what what's coming <laughs> to mind here, but I feel like in many ways you have united the clans and done so really effectively. You brought us into the mix, and now it's it's saying okay, well the U.S., North America, there's even if forty percent is outside, there's still so many that aren't yet part of it. Mm-hmm. And as we add more into the mix and as the impressions and audience scale grows, the industry grows. You're 100% right. And, and that was my vision from the beginning. It's something we're doubling down on again today. I mean, if you look at the behemoths out there in terms of, say, competition for the media dollar, Google, Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, what people don't realize is that one company – uh, as an example, selling theme parks, UK television, US TV, US cable, that's, uh, that's Comcast. Uh, you know, only by coming together, bringing all the global data companies together, the media owners together, the, the programmatics, the DSP, the SSP, the hardware, the software, that's what we've done and built this DPAA family. And I'm so glad you're, you're part of the leadership of the DPAA family, because scale drives it. And what do you get with scale? You get knowledge, you get best practices, you get transferring of information. You know, you look at Google, how many brilliant engineers are, are sitting in, in their headquarters? Um, you know, you've got some great engineers here, but you don't have thousands. So, you know, as we take the use of, of all of our mechanism, and it's a great, you know, I. What I pride myself on is we built a nice community, and I appreciate you noticing that, Jonathan. Uh, the people are all good, decent people. They all kind of share and care, and uh, and we've instituted that. I have actually have a, a bit of a, as you've seen and heard, a, a no-asshole policy in our membership. Right. And uh, if people don't act right or don't act decently or, uh, you know, engage in subterfuge or other you know, seemingly illicit types of actions, uh, we find a way that they won't be a member any longer. Mm. And, uh, and we have a pretty good sense of that coming in. And we've dissuaded many people that we thought weren't part of this kind of culture that we've built here. And it's critical for me and the way I've lived my life and the way I'm living it forward, as this is a forward-thinking yep. uh, podcast, 
is that you've got to be around decent people. I mean, you, Jonathan, you're an amazing family man. You're, you've got great family. You've got great wife and daughters, and I've met a lot of your relatives. Thank you. And, um, and the staff that you have um, you know, also follows that. If we're not enjoying ourselves and being good, decent people, uh, then we're not doing the right thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I think that at the end of the day, there's principles that apply that um, almost never change, but sometimes aren't always followed. Mm-hmm. You know? And one of those that, that you're talking about is uh, quality over quantity. And, you know, we, we have a physical, like, screen that we're connecting to. Even though it's a digital, you know, uh, ad or, or piece of content on there, but it, it's physical. And there's only so many digital out of home screens, digital billboards. And yes, we're growing and there's more screens being put out and there's more audience to be reached. Um, but it's not like pixels. We're dealing with atoms. And I, I think that when, as we enter into the, the pure digital mix, which started a few years ago and is continuing to amplify, um, advertisers are, are thinking about quality versus quantity. And even if we take like a, a personal experience view of the last few years where we were told we can't go out of our home and we were giving all of these different ways to communicate, it became a quantity game where it's slacks and it's me- iMessages and it's your social plan, and emails and everything. And we just get bombarded. And I think a lot of us, at least me personally, are feeling that the quality of being with people out of our home in what's truly a true social environment is what we want and yearn. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, as the story gets told for why digital home in the mix, it's asking people, what do you want to be spending your time doing? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be on another Zoom meeting? Do you want to be in front of a video game console? Or do you want to be out at a ball game or at a bar with friends or at a great restaurant or getting on a plane? And so I, I think of it, what you touched upon there, where it's there's quality people mm-hmm. in the industry, mm-hmm. but there's also a quality intrinsically to the medium mm-hmm. that I, th- I think everyone appreciates, but hasn't yet necessarily put their dollars behind the way that they feel about the medium. What do you think about that? I think that's very important. Look, we're, we're human animals. We need to connect, and we need to connect not necessarily um, only by Zoom, but in person. And that's where, when you're experiencing a screen outside the home, you're outside the home. Just the fact that you're walking or you're moving um, is getting the blood flowing. It's, yeah. you know, it's getting your, yourself in shape. And when the blood flows, the mind is stimulated and the heart is passionate. And that's, that's what life's about. And, and I think we will see coming out of Zoom, maybe not five days a week, but coming out of uh, COVID, of course, mm-hmm. not five days a week. But I think we have to, we have to get together more. And we are humans, and that's how we connect. And, and yes, and out of home is that great connective tissue. It's fabulous. Yep. And from a trend perspective, you know, I started my career in e-commerce. My family had a, a small business that we took from offline catalogs to online. And that was 1999. And I, we watched as and participated as every major digital transformation happened from the emergence of Google to programmatic to social to mobile. And really looking at the last you know, three, four years, it made sense that television transitioned to connected television where you could do digital targeting and more flexible control. Um, and, I, and one of the things that really excited me was just you know, we started building a Domini in 2015 we didn't necessarily know, have the, we had a vision where there could be a marketplace that could make it easier, but where things have been taken, where it's like, there's actually us kind of fitting into a digital ecosystem where, you know, you you truly are part of an omni-channel buy. Mm-hmm. That wasn't part of our thought process back then, but it very much is now. And I believe that that transformation you were describing where us as consumers, us as just individuals who want to leave our homes and, and be out, translates also to a scale of audience, which translates also to the, the dollars. Mm-hmm. And so if CTV was the hot thing during the pandemic when everyone was at home as the new digital way to buy television, that now programmatic and digital out of home is the next gen of this channel that just fits in. It's another arrow in the quiver, but it's with the same premise um, with everything else. Absolutely. And you mentioned this omni-channel world. Look, there's 
consumers are touching every media point and brands want to touch every place that consumers touching. And digital out of home is an incredible part of that. And we're only moving more outside the home post pandemic. So, um, you know, the opportunity to experience, I, I was in London, um, uh, outer mark is an amazing company. They have built a real estate and digital sign business with screens all around it and closed. And maybe we'll, when we cut this, I'll show you some pictures of it. And the brilliance of that experience and Piccadilly lights and the power. Look at, you know, look at Times Square, you know, New Year's as, mm -hmm. as we just mm -hmm. saw. Um, it's um, it, the, the, captivating. It's captivating. And the power of video is not a brand or a consumer that doesn't get up every day and say, I love video. And now that you can capture this video outside the home, on your daily journey is very powerful, and it's only going to morph more in that direction. Yep, and and I think your summit was even kind of badge that video everywhere, the video everywhere summit, and you know our our company Ad Omni is literally that yes, it's advertised right. everywhere, omnipresent. Right, and and I think that's the opportunity that bringing more you know screens together, bringing the technology, bringing the the targeting and the measurement, which we've done. You know, like a lot of innovation happened during mm -hmm. the pandemic when. Uh, we weren't necessarily focused on the, the normal operating business. And so that's one of our bets. I know you've made two bets. Um, you know, the, the UGC was something that at first people looked at it and were like, do we really want consumers on our screens? Does it have these negative qualities? And when done the right way, where it's moderated properly, where it's mm -hmm. brand safe, where the brands are involved, we think it could be a really big way to pull in some brand new budgets that used to think of social a certain way, and now they say, oh, it's another screen. It's just... I think that's screen. great, Jonathan. I, I got two thoughts for you on that. One is that I think we have a much better opportunity to moderate the content than digital media. And look, that has been the failing recently of, mm -hmm. of Twitter and Meta and others. Uh, mm -hmm. We have much tighter control on our medium um, because we're the way it's set up. And then the other thought, I think we should work together and start having conversations with makers and the agencies that mm -hmm. have these social media talents and let's start to educate them onto the opportunity of this great new canvas and palette that they can not only create on TikTok, but they can create on a Hollywood and Vine or in Times Square or in Las Vegas or a, you know Piccadilly Circus. And, the, and the, the major platforms are spending hundreds of millions, even billions, trying to have more content created. Mm -hmm. Having these creators supported with different, whether it's AR experiences or different templates or themes or things that, are, that, that would make for a fun sort of application for that. And so the opportunity for, for these creators where literally it's, you know, like take Charlie D'Amelio, who we did a, a partnership with. She was just this young girl that did, you know, some dance right. videos and then all of a sudden got a following and then all of a sudden has over 100 million people that, that are following her, her moves. And the reaction people have to the screens when they see themselves on there, even if they have 100, like when we did the, the, uh, the Kylie Jenner campaign. Sure. She's got hundreds of millions of followers, but a, li a like from hundreds of millions of people compared to being on a digital billboard or right. being in Times Square. Right. That is so much more valuable to them. Right. That's that that is like social. Growth. And they still get the social because people are taking pictures of the video in Times Square, and then right. it becomes social amplified as well. Yeah. So you've got both of that. But yeah, to you've got the opportunity to be on a big screen as opposed to a mobile screen. Mm -hmm. You've got the opportunity to be engaging with other people and looking at it and pointing to it, and not just once again seeing in your own cocoon. Mm -hmm. And then you have the opportunity to also socially amplify it on the other methods. It's not just reach and frequency and you just hitting them with the same CPG brand product message over and over and over. It's having creators showcase it, mm -hmm. do some fun stuff with it, and then mix in the, the standard content. So it's sure. not either or, like there, sure. there is a blend, a harmony. The second is that programmatic digital at home, UGC content from social, um, measurement, of digital home campaigns, those are all very new and also very under the radar for a lot of buyers who are used to just, I buy Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or I do you know this type of programmatic display. And I think there's a, you know, you guys do great work to 
produce these events that bring people together. Your, your, your video shorts are, are awesome. But there is a huge gap between a planner and a buyer in other channels and the, those who can do the same tactics using our channel. That's right. And so I, I personally believe, yeah. and we, we are investing significant amount into video content, I mean, this podcast, mm-hmm. to just enlighten people about what exists, just, hey, this exists, and then how do we get them to actually take action? Mm-hmm. Exactly. We want people to learn something and then apply it. So you're not just watching how a bicycle was made and how people ride bicycles, you're getting on the bicycle. Excellent. I think that piece has been missing Excellent. in our space, and that's one of the, the second bet that we're that we're I love that. in on. I'd like to tie together your, your last two bets, um, education and then the power of content creators and video. We have a very unique medium here. If you look at where it's experienced, how it's experienced, the physicality of the medium, the digital nature of the medium, the success of media happens when people use it for its uniqueness and its power. As an example, the first television commercials um, basically was a radio announcer sitting at a desk, maybe something like this, with a microphone, Mm -hmm. and he held up a product. It wasn't whiskey in those days, but he basically held up the product in a radio format with a radio mic and said, buy this product. And those were the first TV commercials. And then when creative people got involved, and the data people got involved to see what worked. And uh, innovation happened, which is what's happening now in our space. Mm -hmm. Then you had um, close-ups, and then you had primary movement, and secondary movement, and tertiary movement, and you had quick cuts, and you had music and sound, and, and they figured out how to use this medium that it's not just radio plus a camera, but it's a whole new medium. Right. So as we get into you know, the youth and the creators and the clever folks of the brand. You know, we have a a creative council we form now with some Mm -hmm. amazing, brilliant creative folks that are going to, you know, do just what we're talking about here. We built this creative council and uh, it's being led by uh, Dan Dawson, Mm. uh, who's a brilliant guy. Brilliant guy. He he runs the creative, a grand visual Mm -hmm. and talent based in London, really smart. And once again, a great guy to the ethos of DPAA. He's sure. a terrific guy. Um, David Sable, who was the CEO globally of Young and Rubicam for 15 years, is on my creative council. Mm. John Bond, Kirschenbaum and Bond, one of the brilliant creators, the head of creative at Gale Partners. Um, and this group is going to innovate, create, set standards, and really help this medium get to its next level, just what you're talking about as well. And let's continue to collaborate on this as well because they can weigh in to the projects that you're doing and and give it some kind of stamp of approval and this is where innovation happens from creative thinking of course with data with attribution with understanding the value of it but but we we have such a, a wonderful opportunity to take this canvas this palette like i said before and and really blow it out and not just do you know 15 second ads that run on social on the big screens i love it I mean, that, that kind of dovetails with that first one about doing more, you know, doing more with what the, what's being coming off the screen, what's being projected from the screen. But I think it also touches my third bet. And we might share this. So you might even have to think about the third one because okay. maybe this is our shared one. Wait, can I do a little announcement? And now the Jonathan Goodall third bet of the year from Las Vegas, Nevada. Here it is. Tell us, Jonathan, what is it? It's the jackhammer. The jackhammer. That's it, the jackhammer. And you know what we're going to do with this jackhammer? I yeah. guess in your case, it would be like some sort of like medieval sword pile driver for William Wallace. But the jackhammer, and what the jackhammer is doing is taking the legacy thought processes okay. and the legacy silos that have been built in all these organizations yeah. Yeah. and breaking it down. Whether it's jackhammering it, whether it's taking a hammer to the wall, whatever the case may be, because I believe that creatives need to have a seat early on Mm -hmm. during the planning process Mm -hmm. to be thinking about how are we telling this story and using the different screens and different channels effectively. Um, And that's not happening. Like that, like at least not, you know, enough. When we say it's a bet that we need to take a jackhammer to all these things, it's not easy. I know the holding companies have been designed over many years with certain structures and it's hard to reinvent 
But I believe that by just showing them it's another screen that has the, the a purchasing mechanism, a measurement mechanism. Yeah, we haven't talked about QR codes and interactivity. Yep. Right. All, all of that can have can can feed into the same sort of way of buying it, the way of assessing how it's working, that 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 we can break down those silos and we can do that together. And that's really, I think, where the like the the true growth opportunity comes. When we're not growing 10, 20 percent, mm -hmm. but we're growing like what we should be growing. You're 100 percent right. We focused since I've been doing this at the top brand levels, at the heads of agencies, at the top decision makers, because the closer you get down to the bottom, the more you've got less decision making and, and you've got more of a silo built in. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting if you, you think about it, um, to some degree, the trend is our friend. I mean, the whole co's are realizing this. We've seen lots of changes recently in the whole co's kind of, you know, changing around, especially they're out of home. I'll never forget um, when Sir Martin Sorrell spoke at my conference mm -hmm. in 19. He spoke about how he formed Kinetic early on to give a special attention to out of home. And then he realized that the special attention locked it within a silo and borders and uh, minimized its growth and opportunity. And now he is, Media Monks is one of the hottest shops around because mm -hmm. they're flexible and they're mm -hmm. nimble and they're taking everything to account from the start. And the lower you get down the funnel, the more you're, you're siloed. And, I, and that's why we spend a lot of our time with our members and introducing our members. The, the silos have not been decided yet. The fragments have not been cut off yet. And that's, mm -hmm. that's really key that we do that. And uh, let's take a jackhammer to it, man. Absolutely. And we're doing it. We, yeah. we did a campaign with uh, Activision this past fall. A first of its kind where it brought in UGC content and AR and your standard digital home sort of branded marketing all into one. We didn't talk to their their agency. We didn't talk to their digital home specialist. This was a social buy where you had the CMO or, you know, key stakeholders sort of at that level uh, involved in something that really hadn't been done, at least in that space. And, and that was combining all those things for the launch of World of Warcraft. And, and it's like, it's things like that, that when people realize, oh, I didn't know that that existed, where we together need to not just talk about here's where we want to go, every opportunity to share what was just done, or did you know that you could do this? The tactical implementation side is what I think we need to paint that picture very clearly. Mm -hmm. And that's our challenge. I mean, I think that we together from an industry perspective and from a platform vendor that's doing some of these bleeding edge things, need to make sure that that story is being told. And you're literally the ultimate storyteller there is. And you mentioned the CMOs. Look, the CMO wants to sell product. As you get further down the line, the TV buyer wants to accumulate rating points. Uh, the radio buyer may want reach across a few counties. But the more we speak to the person that wants to move brands and move product, the more we have a chance to really, you know, showcase the, this wonderful medium that we're busy growing. And uh, I love the jackhammer. And, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of always done that in my career. And, you know, to some degree early on when I was on sales calls with Ted Turner, <laughs> you know, we would go to ad agencies and they'd say, nice to see you, Barry and Ted. Thanks for coming in. Ted, can I have your autograph? And Barry, like, what the fuck are you doing what here? What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. And uh, they would say, well, you know, we have TV, radio, print, and out-of-home budgets, um, but we don't have any cable TV budgets. And, uh, you know, we would make the case that the people that were buying Toyotas were watching 50 channels, and they were advertising on three. Maybe you need to do something different right. if you want to sell Toyotas. Right. Uh, and we'd go out, speak to the brands directly, and the CMOs and the planners, you know, earlier up in the decision-making process, and that's how we built a cable television industry, and then I did that in digital, and uh, you know, I did that in global all along. So it's, uh, that's, that's the good fight, and then we are fighting the good fight. Uh, thank you for, for joining me here. It's been uh, a pleasure. I know you've been lightly sipping this, but yes, um, it is good, really good stuff. But uh, we hope to see you guys around, and if you want to reach Barry Fry, what's the best way to get hold? Uh, Barry.fry at dpaaglobal.com. Um, easily reached on LinkedIn, and uh, or ask anybody. Most people know me, um, but uh, it's quality scotch. It's a quality company, a quality Adomni, and 
I love seeing your new quality headquarters here. It's been Thank refurbished you. since COVID and uh, looks great. And this is a lovely room and you've got a terrific staff working here and uh, uh, wonderful. Uh, Adam and Joe, it's, uh, this has been great. So thanks for having me. It's great to see you, John. Always a pleasure.